Well, hello. Today is December the 7th, Thursday, December 7th, 7th 2023. <laughs> My name is John Campbell. This is Gospel According to John Campbell. You can see by the ticket tape there that um, you can go to YouTube if you want to see more videos or to follow up with this video. Um, you can go there and and follow this this stream. This is a live stream. I believe it's on Facebook. And uh, I'm going to be talking on the topic today about rebellion. And the idea of rebellion, um, you know, I actually attempted to record, uh, to, to load up the stream before. Um, it came up as a different name. But the name I have here looks like Rebellion, the Hero Deception of the Last Days. And if you're a movie lover like 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 I am, um, I like that title. I think it's kind of cool because in so many ways, so many movies that I watch, there are so many issues of the need to rebel against a tyrannical order. And I know where many of us will go with that. But before I say anything else, and I, I believe that this is a lesson, when I thought about talking about this, it challenged me. Part of me felt, wow. Wow, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm challenged by by speaking of this. I'm challenged by what uh, I'm revealing in my character. And so, you know, I think certainly I should say a prayer. But I, I believe it will be challenging for you. If you are seeking to serve the Father, if you're seeking to, in these last days, to step up and, and show leadership, to help God's people, to help your family, to transform... This is an important lesson to make sure that we're not caught up in a great deception. I'm going to say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for your mercy, your kindness, your love. I thank you that you keep your word and promises that you shall never leave me nor forsake me or those brothers and sisters that have repented, been baptized in the name of Jesus, those who've called on your name. And Father, I pray that this message, this word will go out as your as you've desired and it will edify and it will strengthen it shall teach it will refine so that the body of Christ may be mature that we can all grow into unity of the faith that we can remove from ourselves anything that is ungodly any ungodly thought or attitude and that we can abide in your care and and be blessed in your law, statutes, commandments, blessings, promises. For Father, you've said for us to stand on your promises and in the mighty name of Jesus that he would be our rock. And through him, we would have victory over all things. I bless everyone who hears the sound of my voice and, and, and myself, that I might speak from the unction of the Holy Spirit, that your words would pour through me and I would become less and you would become more. And for those who are listening, that this would meet a particular need, whether they're listening this very right now or in the future, that, Father, you might speak to them and allow for them to find blessing and freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Um, so let's let's talk about this rebellion, the hero deception in the last days. Well, so if we're going to talk about a deception, it means there's something hidden from us, and rebellion could be used as a deception. You know, it's funny. Already I can feel that the notes that I have, God is moving in a different way from my notes. Hallelujah. That's good, because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak. Let me, let me start by going to Revelations chapter 12, and we're going to look at verse 7. I think today I'm reading from the uh, King James Version, and it says here, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against, fought and his angels, and, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. 
And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren has been cast down, and which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him. They overcame, the saints overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. They loved not their lives unto the death. Okay, so what is the deception? We see her framed a time in history. It says here in this book of Revelation, in these last days, that Satan would be thrown down from his authority. When did that happen? Well, I'll tell you, brother and sister, that happened when Jesus died and raised from the dead. And all authority in heaven and earth had been given to him. Satan before tempted Jesus and said, oh, well, I, I, all these kingdoms I can give to you, they're mine to give, just bow down. But Jesus, having raised from the dead, was crowned with glory and honor, and Satan fell like lightning. Now, it is so hard for us to believe in a spiritual world. We have been indoctrinated to look at only what we can see. And even that's not working anymore. So now we believe in, in galaxies far, far away. We're waiting for, for Martians and, and aliens and creatures of all different kinds, different realms coming. Because, boy, there are a lot of movies and TV shows that I know I've watched that you probably watch or you're binging on that are talking about all kinds of creatures from all different galaxies far, far away. And it's to the point where... I mean, I grew up where we used to have little action figures. <laughs> we, we have been indoctrinated with heroes. With heroes. Um, the, the deception is that it, we hear in Revelations that Satan has lost his authority. For those of you who believe in the Bible, and for those of you who believe in Jesus Christ, that Satan has lost his authority, that we now who are in Christ have been clothed in Christ, and we can go out now and make disciples. And if those who believe and are baptized will be saved, and Mark says, and these signs we would follow them that believe in their name, in the name of Jesus, we would cast out devils, we'd speak in new tongues, we'd lay hands, people would recover, we would trample snakes and scorpions. And, and, and in Luke chapter 10, it shows that snakes and scorpions represent the demonic forces of evil, spirits in high places, demons and fallen angels. We would have authority over them because Satan fell like lightning. His kingdom is under the kingdom of God. But there's a deception afoot. Because we have been trained, we are slowly being trained to prepare for something that Jesus said would come. Jesus, in the Olivet Discourse, when he speaks, he speaks in Matthew chapter 24. And he would speak about all the things that would come, the destruction of the temple, the destruction of Jerusalem, and the end times, his return. And he talked about um, these prophetic times, and he, he, he warned them and said, make sure no one deceives you. So make sure no one deceives you. And he said, as it was in the day of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Remember now. There's a big deception coming. As it was in the day of Noah, so it will be with the coming of Jesus. So what happened in the day of Noah? And then if we look back at Genesis chapter 6, this is the, this is the scripture that Jesus is referring to. Genesis chapter 6, we go there and let's just read a little bit to see. And it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God. Sons of God. When you hear the term son of God, it's talking about immortal beings. It's talking about beings that have supernatural power or attached to a spirit that has eternal power. 
it says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, that they were beautiful, and they took them wives of all they chose, all that which they chose. That means they had sex with these women. And the Lord God, Yahweh Almighty, the Most High, said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, there were giants. <laughs> now, giants, when people look at the word behind the English word I've read there, there's a term called nephal. And it can mean giant. It can mean tyrant. It can mean hero. It can mean hero. Yes, I said, <laughs> I think the gate is hero. <laughs> let's, let's fix that gate. It can mean hero. There were giants or there were heroes or there were tyrants in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came in unto daughters of men and they bare children to them, which became the mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. These are famous people because they had extraordinary powers. Could it be like Hercules? Perseus? Could it be there is a time? Well, if you look at the book of Enoch, there's a period of time when God said he would allow a judgment on the descendants of these people who, these what they call titans, these half human and half angelic people with powers. And that there would be a judgment in the book of Enoch, and we would call it the clash of the titans. That at the end of this, they would wipe them, many of themselves out. Not all, because we see there's a couple remnants that survive or show up again. Maybe angels come back again. As I said earlier here, there were giants in those days and afterward, right? Okay, verse 4. Um, so these are men of renown. And in verse 5, And God saw the wickedness of man, was great in the earth, and th that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And God repented, the Lord, and it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him at His heart. And the Lord said, "I will destroy man from whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and, and beast and creepy things and fowl of the air, for repent of me that I have made them." And but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. So he had a, a good bloodline. And, and if you've looked at other videos, you can go to Gospel According to John Camp here. If you looked at other videos, you'll see, uh, well, blood has importance. There is doorways through bloodlines. God visits the iniquity of, of the fathers into the third and fourth generation through bloodlines. God also blesses bloodlines, showing loving commitment to thousands that keep of the bloodline that keep his commands. It says that in Exodus chapter 20. So back to this thing, we see in, 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 in Genesis chapter 6, in the times of Noah, there was the rise of the heroes. I did say it. The rise of of the heroes, the rise of the giants. And Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so will it be in his coming. Interesting. Now, in the book of Revelation, which we just looked at, it, said, Jesus, um, it says there that Satan has fallen like lightning and he deceives the entire world. Yeah, so you're deceived, and I'm deceived, and we're all deceived. I mean, we're, we can, as we, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciple, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And I believe we're all, if the more we hold to Jesus' teaching, the more we meditate on his laws, the more we meditate on the laws of God, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to Yah Almighty, God, our Father Yah, but those revealed are for us that we may keep his laws. The more that we meditate, we study his laws, 
all kinds of things are revealed in this world because we are told a lie. We have been told lies. You know, I've said here, rebellion, the hero deception of the last days. You know, in the garden, what brought about sin? What brought about the children of men and not the sons of God? Because Adam was made in God's image. He was a son of God. But what brought about his fall, his demise, and the spirit of God leaving him, what brought up and him having to leave the garden was rebellion. Rebellion caused that. He was tempted by the devil and he decided to leave God's laws. He was tempted by how beautiful, how beautiful the 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 fruit was and how the tree of life could make men, tree of knowledge of good and evil can make men wise could make people a god like could make them like hero a <laughs> uh, part god part man he did not trust in god to give him that divinity that power he had it but he gave it up for the deception and that decision brought about the world of sin all the children of men, the fallen children who lost the image of God, the spirit of God on them, had the likeness, but no longer had the authority in the heavens. No longer. This deception is happening again. It was through rebellion that from one man, all men were created that now suffered the curse of sin. It was through obedience and humility that we can be freed, that Jesus humbled himself in the sight of the Lord and was lifted up, and now we can humble ourselves before God and enter into that covenant. Rebellion created the world then, and today, through the devil, rebellion will create the new world order. The rebellion will create the order where we will rebel against divine law. And that's where we are, family. We're in the time of the rise of the heroes. And this is why so many movies deal with superheroes. They deal with tyrants. They deal with heroes. They deal with those that God, we have now championed those that in the Bible, God would not want us to associate with. We champion the witches and the wizards and the warlocks, the dwarfs. You know, if you read the, the book of Leviticus or Deuteronomy, you're going to see that these some of these beings and people, God is not, he, he does not want to, to us to dwell with. He, he does not permit a witch to live. And so the great deception for so many of us is that we have been programmed to love the rebellion. In fact, you know, there are countries in the world that were born of rebellion, namely America, which really is the, the country that you could say rules the world. And in America, it was born from rebellion. There is a deception that Satan has for us. And because we are unaware, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Because you reject knowledge, I will reject you as my priests. Because you've forsaken my laws, I will forget your children. This is in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It's the words of Father Yah spoken through the prophet. And they cannot be broken. We perish for a lack of knowledge. And we think that rebellion is a good thing. When I watch Rocky movies, rebel. When I watch Star Wars, I think the Rebel Alliance, they're my people. Go, go Luke. <laughs> go Mandalorian, rebel against the evil empire. When I watch Lord of the Rings, the dwarf and the wizard, and they're, they're battling and Sauron, this dark force, fight against the rebellion. Rebel, fight. When I watch Hunger Games, rebel. 
When I watched the Maze Runner, yes, I did. I watched it. Rebel! The Matrix. Rebel! Terminator. Rebel! <laughs> Avatar. Fight against these. Fight against these invaders. Rebel! All right. Well, maybe Avatar. I don't know. But uh, Rebellion, we're sold on it. And we're being sold on all the characters. You know, the most powerful characters in these stories are the witches and the warlocks. And, and we watch comedic shows. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I know I, I seem old now. Um, we, we have shows like Lucifer. We are now being conditioned to follow the hero, to follow the tyrant, to follow those who rebel against God, rebel against divine order. You're saying, oh, that's too much. It's just a show. It's just a show. Well, maybe it's not just a show. And I hope that as I'm speaking about this, it will cause you to just give thought. Give thought to what you're being socialized in. You know, in the Bible, I'll give you a story. King Saul, the first king of Israel, he's chosen. And God tells him to fight a people called the Amalekites, to totally dis to destroy them. Because they were a people who, uh, they they were evil, they operated in divination, and they had attacked the Israelites. When they were coming out of Egypt, They some of the stragglers, the old, the young, these Amalekites would would kill people off. And um, God puts a judgment. He the, the gods that they worship, the practices that they do, they're in the land that he had given to Shem and given to um, the people of Israel. And he wants them removed, these Amalekites. And their king, Agag. Now he sends Saul and he says, you're the king now. Go and totally wipe them out and destroy everything. Kill, you know, kill all the animals. Kill all the people. Kill everything. What they're attached to, all those animals, and they, there is curses attached to them. Destroy it all. Well, so when Saul, Saul we're going to pick it up in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Um, but it says here, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah unto the uh, unto you got to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Oh, oh no, wait, wait a second. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, the king, and the best of the sheep and the oxen, oxen, and the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good. And would not utterly destroy them, but but everything that was vile and ref, and, and refuse that they destroyed utterly. And the Lord, the, and the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, "It repents of me." Here he says again, like he said in Noah, "It repent of me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments." So it grieved Samuel, and he cried out unto the Lord all night. When Samuel rose up early to when when Samuel rose up early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told to Samuel, saying at Carmel, "Behold." Saul has set up camp, and he's, you know, and I'm just going to hit to the point. Saul had not killed Agag the king, and he, he, would, he actually performed the sacrifices that Samuel was, as a priest, supposed to do. And the reason he did it is because he was afraid of the people. He was afraid of the people, and he decided he needed to do these sacrifices. He didn't kill all the spoils, and he, he was afraid. He rebelled against the word of the Lord. And there's a phrase here that is, uh, is worth you looking at. There's a wise phrase here. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, 4, uh, Samuel's describing, and, and Sam, Samuel says, Have the Lord our God. Great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Does he have the, as much delight as that as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. 
Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected thee from being king. And so, family, when I hear that, you can go over that story, First Samuel chapter 15. It's worth your time. When I go over that and I see the consequence of rebellion, he says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. See, we're being encouraged to rebel. Now, I know, I know what you're saying. These are, they're evil bankers that are in the world. We need to rebel. There are evil doctors in the world. We need to rebel. Some of you, there are lizard people. We need to rebel. There are evil priests. We need to rebel. There are people with blue blood. We need to rebel. There are people that are seeking to destroy us, we have no choice but to rebel. Uh Uh-oh, my camera's going through. Let me just move that out of the way. Pretend like it's not not there. Um, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And if you watch how God's people have dealt with rebellion, the righteous like Daniel, the righteous like Joseph, the righteous... um, uh, prophets and kings, they trusted in God. They trusted in God. And so we're at a time now where, you know, you're going to see laws and statutes and people are going to take to the street for the evil that's that's being done to them. I'll say to you, I'll say to you, find faith and trust in God. God, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. That if we make the most I our habitation, even the Lord, he shall protect us. And why am I saying that? Because we're going to see, with all the movies and all the indoctrination, we're going to see a great rebellion grow in the earth. And it's going to deceive a lot of us to participate in that rebellion. And, and even practically, let me just say here, uh, I'm going to hit some things, and I know this is going to be tough, but just I want you to consider, whatever God says in his law for us to do, when we choose not to do it, we rebel and we practice witchcraft. Whatever God says in his, um, to us through his Holy Spirit, when we hear that and we choose to rebel, whatever we receive there, then he's saying a word to us, we feel in the Holy Spirit we should do something or not do something, and we don't do it. We rebel, and it's witchcraft. It's the same kind of witchcraft when Aaron, who was the high priest, he was afraid of the people, and he created a golden calf to appease the people and did a great rebellion that, that broke the covenant God had with his people. See, Saul refused to obey God, and it, 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 it hurt the nation. Those of us who are leaders, we can be so tempted by fear of the people in what we say and what we do. God may call you to something in your life that you're like, how will I possibly do that? And we're tempted to not obey. And the consequences of our choices can lead to, uh, can, can the consequences, we can choose to rebel or not fully obey that lead to consequences. Even righteous men like Abraham, God said, through Sarah you'll have a child, but he took the handmaid, Hagar. It created the Ishmaelites, who to this day there is a war. There's been a battle between the Ishmaelites and the true seed of Israel. That's another topic some other time. So the choices we make out of rebellion, David was supposed to go to, uh, during spring, go to war as a king. Instead, he stayed and slept with Bathsheba and lost four of his sons because of the cover-up and the sin that he did. Eventually, the line was was of uh, Israel was 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 broken up. So rebellion. I'm saying to you that when you step out of God's will, what does that mean? For example, if you're 
in a marriage, a husband, and you're not loving your wife and you're not providing for your wife, you don't, you don't wash her with the word. You're not reading the word and blessing your wife and your children, trying to, to, to lead them as Christ would his church. You're, you're in rebellion and it can't be blessed. So what do you do? We need to humble ourselves. We have to say, not our will, but God's will. I don't feel adequate, but step into that space. Wives, when we when the Bible says that wives are to the church like Christ, like, like the church is to Christ, wives are to their husbands as the church is to Christ. And that we as a church of Christ, we obey, we reverence Christ, we follow his lead, we support his lead. Oh, I know. I know. I know that some of you ain't going like that. But when we choose not to do that, when we tear down that man that God has placed in your life, when you undermine, when you refuse to follow the lead and build together, when you're doing your own thing, that's rebellion. And it leads to a disintegration or weakening of the family. It weakens the strength of your children. It's rebellion. It's to God witchcraft because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft to God. Stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. So we have to relook. The devil deceives us and thinks, oh, when I rebel on, on the work, when, when I'm a student, I rebel against my teacher. When children, when we rebel against our parents, in fact, we have created something in the West where teenage years are supposed to be the years of rebellion. I mean, you, you, it's not necessarily in all cultures, but certainly in the West, we're like, that's the years where we can rebel and do what we want. Where are that in the Bible? Where is that? But we've allowed that, and what happens? We see that these young these teenagers, these young adults, do not mature. They stay in, in, a, in a period of rebellion, and they end up in arrested development. The very same consequences that come when someone practices witchcraft. Someone who practices witchcraft experiences arrested development. If they practice witchcraft, they experience uh, um, an inability to produce healthy children, prosperous children when people do witchcraft. It's a sign. In the same way we've created rebellion And we're unaware of the consequences. Because why? Because the devil deceives the whole world. It's because we're in the age of heroes. And every movie we watch is a rebel. And we love it. (laughs) We love the rebel. We're conditioned to love the rebel. The music comes on. We're we're like, man, (laughs) you know, they're rebelling against the authority. We are being prepared. Yes, you're being prepared. We're being prepared for this age of, of, of rising up, rebelling. Why? Because it's going to be the world of the Antichrist. Oh, yes. The coming of the lawless one, the lawless, the one who will break the laws of God. Jesus said, let no one deceive you as in the days of Noah, when the sons of God, angels, would create a race, the seed of the serpent, and that they would be an enmity against the true children of God. You know, the seed of the serpent uh, in in Genesis chapter 3 will be an enmity. They will fight against the true seed of God, those brothers and sisters of ours who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, who walk after righteousness. There is a deception, and I want to encourage you that our role is not to rebel. When we truly trust in God, we trust even as Jesus was hanging on the cross, he trusted God. Even as Daniel was in the lion's den, he trusted God. Joseph was in the dungeon, and he trusted God. Elijah was standing in front of a uh, 900 prophets of Baal and Asherah. He trusted God, and fire came. And we have to trust that the laws of God do not have to be broken, that we do not need to take things into our own hands. 
but that we can trust in God and his promises, that we don't have to rise up against the government, that we can trust God to deliver us, for no man will save you, but God will redeem his people. Oh, those of you who know, hear me. There is a deception that we can enter into rebellion and prosper. Well, the devil will try to prosper you, but God has said he, in his community that he will not allow a witch to live. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And I'm going I'm to tie it up with, with, with this scripture here. Um, in thinking about this, and we see Aaron and we see Saul and those of us who are leaders. I know there's been times where the Father has said things to me in the spirit through people unctioning in my, and it's like, oh, it's hard. And you know what I struggle with? I struggle with the temptation of fear. And there's many of you that struggle with fear. When you think of rebelling, oftentimes it is fear <laughs> uh appearing larger than it is. You're looking in your rearview mirror and fear looks closer, fear looks closer to this. The consequences of fear. When God says do something, and for me it's like, okay, step out, share the word. Step out with your art, your music, share, create for me. And I'm like, well how how am I gonna make how am I gonna make money? <laughs> how am I going well, how am I gonna provide? How am I going to survive? How but I don't have all that I need. These end times, how will I live? Fear. And so I, I, I'm tempted to rebel. To rebel against the will of God. Against the word of God in my life. And I want you to know that, that when we choose to do that out of fear, we're stepping into what Aaron did. Aaron knew he shouldn't make no golden calf. But fear of the people. Fear of how he would survive against them. They're going to kill me. Saul knew that he needed to totally wipe out all the Amalekites. You know, Agag, the king, when we look in the book of Esther, his descendant was the one who was trying to kill all the Israelites. His descendant, Because the king got away, got away and was able to keep a seat going. For it. <laughs> so, you know, that rebellion could have cost the nation. They almost got ge genocided out because of that decision. There are many of us who are making decisions out of fear and we're cloaking, we're cloaking our fear in rebellion and we're looking at ourselves as heroes because Satan has made rebellion beautiful in this place. Satan has made rebellion noble because all our movies and our music and all our figures who rebelled, all the nations formed, America formed from the rebellion. And because we have sided with the, 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 the wisdom of the world, as opposed to the truth of God's word, we've seen these acts as noble. Or oh, we're saying, well, what you're saying, the Americans shouldn't have rebelled and shouldn't have happened. I'm saying to you that well, you and I don't understand all that's happening and that there are lies and deceptions. I mean, if you really want to be honest, that America is just a, a corporation of the crown and that it's the same people ruling all, all over the earth, the kingdom of Edom, the kingdom of Rome, that just as the end of the world shall be Esau and the beginning of the one to come, Jacob, found in the in the Apocrypha, for those of you who want to take a look. But I'm saying to us, we have to fight rebellion. And to do that, we have to fight our fears. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Because in these last days, in these last times, what is coming is we're going to see the rise of rebellion in the church. It's already happened, family. We know that. We will see the rise of witchcraft rebellion. We will see the rise of people saying, we can do, we can do what we want and there won't be a consequence. God will forgive us. God will love us. And because of our fear of the people, many of us may not speak out. Many of us will not denounce 
the rebellion. And what happened to Israel when they allowed rebellion? Well, they were destroyed. What happened when they did not respond to the prophet's call or Jesus' call to repent? What happened? Israel was destroyed. And the West, I'm telling you, the West built from the nations that made Jesus Lord, who said, they, I know they went, I know the Crusades, I know they went through by the sword, I see it, I hear it. But the same anointing as they went through the earth, and they had victory and were given prominence because they made Christ Lord, will be the same way that they shall turn and be destroyed and turn to slavery because they are giving up, they're rebelling against the Lord of heaven and earth, who has all authority and power. And even though we can't see Jesus, oh, I'm telling you, you can see now that the very nations that brought Jesus all over the world are leaving him. And with that is coming poverty. With that is coming social disorder. With that is coming rebellion. And there will be an attempt to create a new world out of the ashes of this rebellion. And that's where the Antichrist is going to be, family. For us, we need to hold tight to Jesus' teachings. We need to hold tight to the laws of God and not fear. Not fear ridicule, not fear persecution for standing for what's right. We need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths through this crazy world. We need to stand with his words about marriage and fatherhood and motherhood and, and, and raising children. We need to stand with his ways on how we should live, what's proper and what's not proper. We need to not rebel because of the fear of the people, because God does not change. And what he did in the time of Aaron with the golden calf, he will do again. What he did when Saul rebelled and did not destroy Agag the king and compromised to please the people. If you are compromising with the gospel of Jesus, if your church is compromising, if your church looks more like the Babylonian church as opposed to the church of Jesus Christ in the Bible, then I'll tell you what's coming. Rebellion. Rebellion you will see all the consequences of witchcraft. And here's the last scripture. Revelations chapter 2, verse 18. Jesus is speaking. This is the words of Christ, and he's warning a church. He's warning a church, and in ways, I believe he's warning our churches today. He's warning you. He's warning all of us. And this is what he says. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, Jesus, who has eyes like the flame of fire, and whose feet are like fine brass. I know your works, church, and charity, and service, and faith, and their patience, and thy works in the last are more than you did at the first. And that's many churches who have grown in, in good deeds and have done even greater things later on than they did at the beginning. But listen, notwithstanding, I have a few things against it because you suffer this woman, Jezebel. Now, Jezebel was a priestess who practiced witchcraft in Israel under her husband, Ahab, who she had been married to keep an alliance. She worshiped Baal, who was known as the Lord. You suffer this woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto everyone according to you, uh, every one of you according to your works." Family, the devil has placed tares amongst us all. The devil is allowing for all of us to be tested. And even in our own hearts, the fears that we give into, 
the ways we compromise the words of God. We are in churches where we're compromising and we're compromising the divine authority. To fear God and keep his commandments is the whole duty of man, but we're we're compromising even the basics, even things that God would say are abominations in the Bible. We are now accepting in our churches. And that woman Jezebel, the Im- that, 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 that image of the woman Jezebel, th- who calls herself a prophetess, says that they're speaking on God's behalf. God says he's going to destroy their children. And all who agree, he'll lead them into sickness, spiritual sickness, even physical sickness, sickness, judgment. The modern church is departing from the words of God and judgment is coming. The modern Christian is departing from the words of God, and judgment is coming. God will not permit a witch to live in his assembly, and those who rebel are acting as the sin of witchcraft. There will be a great move in the world to create a worldwide rebellion. Oh, that's coming, family. You're going to hear things that are in the news and everything, and you're going to be called to rebel with the rest of the world, to create in a new, the whole world will rebel against these evil people. Believe me, that's coming. At the end of that, we'll create a new world of peace and order called the New World Order. But Jesus ain't going to be the head of that. The lawless one will. I ask you have the courage to stand with God in your life, to make choices that you will reverence his word, that you will feed on his word and build your spirit in you, his spirit in you by abiding in him. If you do that, if you dwell with him, then you will, he will give you the strength to obey his commands and be blessed. He will give you the strength to resist rebellion and to fully obey. And And my hope today for you is that you don't jump into the great deception that's around you. Oh, yes, you watch the Spider-Man movies and the Superman movies, the Batman movies. I understand. And at some point in all those movies, rebellion. In fact, the journey of a witch starts off rejection. Okay, this is a real rejection, which turns to, you know, anger. Okay, which, which turns to bitterness which turns to a desire to receive, to, to seek vengeance. And that vengeance leads to using power, divine power, that is not sanctioned by God in rebellion. This is how the devil wants to create a whole world of witchcraft, a world of rebellion against the Most High. And we will choose, he wants you to choose power that has not been sanctioned by God, not part of Christ Jesus. I encourage you to trust in the Lord. I encourage you to uh, not make the mistake that Adam did, who was deceived by the the, the, the serpent. I, I pray that you hold on to Jesus and like Jesus, who humbled himself in the sight of the Lord, was raised up to glory and honor, to all authority in heaven and earth, and that you may be high and lifted up in Jesus' name, that you and I will find courage as we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, that we deter not from the right or the left. Though a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, none shall harm us, because we trust in the Lord. Keep his commandments, love one another, and be a shining star in this world of rebellion, rebellion to everything. Stand in that love, and you will overcome because he who endures to the end will be saved family we're not to be heroes as defined by the devil we're to be saints we are the sons of god we are the royal priesthood kings and priests under the divine law we don't need to rebel because this work because God has given all authority in heaven and earth to Jesus. We just simply obey Jesus and walk in the victory he has already won for us. Bless you in the mighty everlasting name of Jesus. Be well.